we come now to a very, very special part of today's celebrations. That is the presentation of the David Cato Vision and Voice Award. An award that recognizes the leadership of individuals who strive to uphold the human rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex people. IPPF has been a pioneer in the promotion of sexual and reproductive rights. And the creation of this award, of which IPPF provides the Secretariat, is an example of this leadership. I would now like to welcome onto stage Kevin Osborne, Senior HAB Advisor at the Central Office of IPPF, to begin the session and to call onto stage some very, very, very, very special people. Kevin, over to you, my friend. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. That is indeed a hard act to follow, but we'll try. Defend, protect, and guarantee sexual rights. I'm sure we've all seen that wording in slogans, in the constitutions of some countries, on banners, and maybe in words that all sound so simple, doesn't it? Protect, safeguard, and guarantee sexual rights. But for many people, especially for many lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and intersex people around the world, the mere defense of these rights is a matter of life and death, quite literally. And this is no truer than in the life and legacy of David Cato. David Cato, a human rights and social justice advocate, campaigner, from Uganda, and whose name is honored in this award, and which was created soon after his brutal murder in January 2011, is an example of what it really means to stand up for what we really believe in, even in really difficult circumstances. This is the second year of the David Cato Vision and Voice Award that aims to recognize, celebrate, and honor the work, the unsung work of individuals around the world who have made a tireless effort to promote their sexual rights. And you know what? This year we can indeed honor and celebrate because we have seen the richness and the diversity and the strength of individuals from far flung places around the world. Judging from both the strength and number of applications that IPPF received in just a six-week period from countries as diverse as Thailand and Honduras, Vietnam and Sierra Leone. There were expressions of interest from over 150 countries and we received well over 120 nominations. So it's, I'm proud to say that advocacy around LGBTI issues is alive and well. And it's clear that IPPF is supporting this through this award, but that individuals around the world are standing up and being counted. But today is also extra special, besides being IPPF's 60th anniversary, because today we have with us a very special guest. I'm very honored, and please join in welcoming, me, welcoming David Cato's mother, Lindia Malumba.
And I would like to take some of the words from the song that was started this morning. That happens to be one of my favorite songs growing up as a South African here, Paradise Road. And I'd like to maybe dedicate just a little bit to Lydia, that I hope that as the choir sang, and they said that better days lie before us, I hope that in terms of LGBTI rights, those better days are indeed before us. I'm very pleased to welcome now Frank Magisha, the chairperson of the David Cato Vision and Voice Awards Steering Committee. He's also the executive director of SMUG, the Sexual Minorities of Uganda, and he, where David used to work. So, um, Frank, please. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, all protocol observed. Let me begin by saying I'm very humbled and honored to speak to you this afternoon. I and my organization, Sexual Minorities Uganda, and my colleagues from the Ugandan LGBT community feel greatly honored, inspired, and supported with the recognition that comes with this award every year. The remembrance and honor to our comrade David Kato is of great inspiration. Allow me to appreciate IPPF, all donors, and people who have supported this award, the steering committee who have done a tremendous job in selecting the recipient of this award. Working on sexual rights in Africa, especially LGBT rights, is not an easy task. My organization, Sexual Minorities Uganda, is currently battling to stop the anti-homosexuality bill in my country, Uganda, that which, if passed into law by my parliament, would criminalize uh, same sex to life in prison. We need your support to stop this legislation. We cannot let this keep happening. We have to speak out against it. I encourage my colleagues, especially from this region, to strongly speak out against this legislation in my country by sending statements to my political leaders in Uganda. I encourage all our supporters, partners, and allies to send and engage with my government on a diplomatic level. In my final note, I would like to say that the LGBT struggle in Africa needs your support and we encourage donors to directly support our movement by partnering with us, support our grassroots work that will build our capacities and provide sexual health services, including HIV AIDS services, because the prevalence in the LGBT community is high. Ladies and gentlemen, let us work together to end the deep-rooted ignorance here in Africa on sexual rights. Let us not bury our heads in the sand, and let us start speaking about homosexuality when we talk about sexual rights. And now I would like to introduce to you an extract from the film Call Me Kuchu, a film that follows the life of David Kato. This film is on main release, and if you have not seen it, I would highly recommend you do see it and also show it to your children. Thank you so much. I'm the very first gay man to be open in Uganda. I'm a teacher by profession. I went to one of the best schools, and here I am. At SMAG, I work as the advocacy and litigation officer. So whenever an LGBT individual gets into a problem, I always have to rush out, look around for lawyers to try to bail out people. So <clears throat> my work mostly is to document uh, violences and cases of discrimination against gay people. If this bill passes, they say within 24 hours, someone should report the person he knows to be gay. We are really going back into a ministry regime. We're going to keep on fighting until we see a liberated lesbian, gays, bisexual, transgender people. I won't keep quiet until we have got our, our vision through. Now we have pushed the dialogue by force. So we brought this action for enforcement of his human rights. David, I know you are struggling, but if people like David can come out and speak sooner or later, they will be free. Prime Minister Gordon Brown came to see me, and what was he talking about? Gays. Mrs. Clinton rang me. What was she talking about? Gays. I sleep here alone. Sometimes I fear if they come and get me here when I'm alone. As it was, it is now never shall be. Life is not static. It moves. Okay, things change. But 
Africans here with our pastors being so stupid and so they are so naive is to educate, make awareness into religious leaders, into MOPs to understand what human rights really means. This court verdict today has shown that indeed justice is possible in this country. I'm going to continue on. No, we have to keep on fighting. We know what you want. Bye-bye. <laughs> I don't have your time. Yesterday, gay rights activist David Katochi Sule was attacked at his home by unknown assailants. <laughs> we have come here to take our friend to his creator. Who are you to judge? God did not punish David Kato. People murdered him falsely in the name of God. Blue angles got lively. There is blood on your hands. In reality, somebody spilled his blood, his brains on the mattress. Let us from Obama, not enough. As we grieve, as we can't forget that we've been empowered through the death of David. It's time for us to fight. The barrier. We don't know where it came from, but we claimed our space. And I think the homophobic side of it is like, how could they do that? Where did they get the guts to do that? They can't wipe out homosexuality. They can't. So, to David, I think it was a great job he did. I wish I could one day get closer to his shoe. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Alidia Mulumba. The mother to David Kato. I'm very happy to be here that we remember my son David Kato. That he used to fight for human rights. We thank for his work and for his courage and everything he did. May God rest his soul in peace. Thank you very much. The inaugural recipient of the David Cato Vision and Voice Award, which was announced on Human Rights Day in December last year, is Maurice Tomlinson, a Jamaican lawyer who has over the past year done an amazing effort in promoting the rights of LGBTI communities. So please join me in welcoming last year's recipient, Maurice Tomlinson. Maurice. Ladies and gentlemen, um, all protocols observed, thank you very much for having me here again. Um, access changes attitudes, that's what I've found over this last year. This is true of any civil rights struggle. If you're not at the table, you can't challenge the hateful rhetoric your opponents will relentlessly try to pour into the ears of politicians and policymakers who you try to convince. The David Cato Vision and Voice Award provides this access on a global scale. And as the inaugural winner of the award, I have been able to amplify the message of my organization, AIDS Free World, about the disastrous impact Caribbean homophobia is having on the regional HIV response. As it stands, Jamaica has possibly the world's highest rate of HIV infe infection among men who have sex with men. 32.9%. But sadly, those charged with addressing the cultural and structural barriers to the life-saving tolerance messaging are more concerned about pandering to fundamentalist religious views 
than actually saving lives. For this reason, I'm glad that the David Cato Vision and Voice Award allowed me to be selected to deliver speeches at numerous conferences addressing the link between homophobia and HIV. Perhaps the most significant for me was the opportunity to represent the voices of the global MSM community at the launch of the groundbreaking report by the Global Commission on HIV and the Law. I realize that I may have upset a few UN officials when I publicly expressed my concern that the UN is shrinking back from boldly condemning countries that still maintain stigmatizing and discriminatory laws and practices which severely compromise the HIV response. But that is exactly what civil society activists have to do. We must never forget that our constituents are the millions of voiceless individuals who cannot advocate for themselves, either due to lack of access or resources. By providing both an unrestricted discretionary cash prize and vital publicity, the award makes our jobs as activists that much easier. Being an activist is also a lonely business sometimes. Even the groups you are advocating for will turn against you in a, on occasion if they think you are making too many waves in their tranquil seas of complac complacency. Again, this award reminds you that you are not alone, that your contributions, though sometimes controversial, matter, and that most of all, you are not being ignored. In my most trying and lonely moments as an activist, my amazing organization, AIDS Free World, constantly reassured me that I am part of a global movement for social justice. The force and strength of the organization Global Advocacy, which supports and facilitates my views, makes a big difference in its cumulative effect. As a result of their support, I am now confronting the government of Trinidad about its atrocious immigration law, which bans the entry of marginalized groups such as MSM and the disabled. I have many pleasant memories as a result of winning this award, and I hope my successor will experience many more. For example, my mother, a fundamentalist Christian who still struggles with accepting my orientation, and even more so my advocacy, said that being recognized in this way must mean I'm doing something right. <laughs> the award also helped me to partly realize my dream of carrying out police sensitivity training in the Caribbean, along with my husband, Tom Decker, of Metropolitan Community Churches. Most amazing, however, was the tremendous opportunity of being the Grand Marshal at the first Uganda Pride March on August 4, 2012. I felt privileged to represent David and march with my incredibly brave Ugandan brothers and sisters. I really hope this event will be an annual one. So, to, to this year's winner of the award, I say, enjoy this well-deserved recognition of your pioneering and important work. And then boldly use this award as a platform to make the world a better place for LGBTI and all its citizens. The team at IPPF, Kevin, Daniel, Alastair, are wonderful at facilitating introductions to world leaders. And be prepared to challenge these, these persons with specific asks. Don't be intimidated. You have earned your right to speak up against LGBT injustices. Do so in the spirit of our dear David, who is no longer with us, but whose legacy continues to inspire through this incredible honor which bears his name. Aluta Continua. Thank you. I'm sure you can agree with me that uh, Maurice is definitely doing something right. Thank you very much, Maurice. As you can imagine, the Global Steering Committee of the David Cater Vision and, Vo Vision and Voice Award, which is a unique combination of donors, LGBT organizations and grassroots activists, and the private sector, had a really tough time 
selecting the 2013 recipient of this award. Tough because Maurice's shoes are rather quite large and need to be filled, and tough because the, the, the caliber of the nominations was incredibly high. However, they have unanimously settled on the 2013 recipient. He has demonstrated his leadership by establishing the first lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex organization in Turkey in 1994, where homosexuality was an absolute taboo. He has demonstrated his commitment when the organization was officially registered in 2004, despite various attempts by the authorities to close it down, accusing it of being a threat to the morals of society. He has demonstrated his courage when he continued to fight and struggle for LGBTI rights, despite being detained on numerous occasions. He has demonstrated his ability to inspire others as he is currently at the forefront of constitutional reform to include non-discrimination for LGBTI people. And he has demonstrated his innovation when he started as a photocopy, let me add, the very first Turkish LGBTI magazine. And he has garnered support from a wide range of coalitions, including, for example, the Human Rights for Women coalition in Turkey. So, ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the 2013 Dev Dukato Vision and Voice Award is Ali Erol from Turkey. Merhaba, David Kato Vision and Voice ödülünün ikinci kazananı olarak beni seçtiği için ödül komitesine derinden teşekkürlerimi sunuyorum. Many thanks to the steering committee of the David Kato Vision Voice Award for selecting me as its second recipient. Hayat arkadaşım, yoldaşım, benim biricik aşkım ve ailem Ali Özbaş ile Ankara'da bir park köşesinde birbirimizi fark etmemizin üzerinden tam 20 yıl geçti. It has been 20 full years since I met my lifelong companion, my fellow, my only love, and my family, Ali Usbash in Ankara at a park corner. 20 yıl önce bu toplumda sadece heteroseksüeller yaşamıyor. Biz de varız diye ortaya çıkıp yürümeye karar verdiğimizde aslında yaptığımız sıradan hayatlarımıza sahip çıkmak ve soluk alacağımız alanları genişletmekten ibaretti. Türkiye'de eşcinsellik güya suç değildi. Ama resmi ideolojinin yaratmak istediği tek tip toplumda eşcinsellere suçu olmayan suçlu muamelesi yapılıyordu. 20 years ago when we said not only heterosexuals but also we live in a society we merely claimed our own lives and expanded a free space for ourselves. In Turkey, being gay was supposedly not a crime, but the state tried to treat gays as criminals without a crime. Çeşitliliği inkar üzerine kurulan Türkiye toplumunda sırf kendi cinsini sevdiği için ahlaksız, hasta ve sapık diye damgalanan eşcinseller hayattan tümüyle dışlanıyorlardı. Karanlık park köşelerine, kıyıda köşte kalmış bir iki hamama hapsedilen hayatlar kendi varoluşlarını ifade edemiyorlardı. Heteroseksis resmi ideoloji insanların öz saygılarını ve onurlarını gasp etmişti. Founded on the denial of diversity, Turkish society was completely banning gays from life, stigmatizing them as immoral, sick and perverted. LGBT people were imprisoned to dark cruising parks and a few abandoned baths and did not have any means to express themselves. The heterosexist state ideology seized their self-respect and pride. 
canım kanım dediği ailesinden sosyal politik çevresine kadar insanların önünde güç alacağı, dayanışacağı, örnek alacağı hiçbir şey yoktu. Böylesi bir yalnızlığın ortasındaki eşcinseller bu toplum değişmez. Böyle gelmiş böyle gider. İnansızlığı ile gizli saklı hayatlarına bile sahip çıkmıyorlardı. LGBT people had no one to depend on, look up to or struggle with together, not even within their own families or in their social and political circles. In the middle of such loneliness, gays had a nothing's ever going to change in this society attitude and would not even claim their discreet lives. Biz ilk olarak hayatlarımıza sahip çıkabileceğimizi söyledik. Daha önce saygı görmemiş, ailesi, öğretmenleri, sosyal arkadaşları olsun kimse tarafından sözü dinlenmemiş insanlar konuşmaya başladılar. Evimiz bir buluşma mekanına dönüştü ve sohbetlerimiz haftalarca devam etti. We needed to do something. LGBT Deep LGBT people who are never respected, never listened to by their families, teachers or friends, started to speak up. Our house turned into a meeting place and our conversations went on for weeks. Tamam, biz bir araya gelip sorunlarımızı paylaşacağız. Peki ama ne olacak? Sorusu nihayet geldi. Biz de hemen kendi sorunlarımıza kendimiz müdahale edebileceğimizi söyledik. Söz uçar, yazı kalır dedik ve bütün sözlerimizi, hikayelerimizi, yaşadıklarımızı, yaşayamadıklarımızı yazıya dökerek Kaoskele adını verdiğimiz ve başlangıçta fotokopi olarak çıkardığımız dergimizde yayınladık. Toplum eşcinselleri güvenmiyordu. Eşcinseller de birbirlerine. Biz bu çıkmaza son vermek için gece gündüz çalışarak Türkiye'nin ilk eşcinsel dergisi Kaoskele'yi her ay düzenli çıkardık. And then the question came up, okay, we got together and shared our problems, but what next? We then said that we must take care of our own problems. Words fly away, writings remain. So we started to write down our own sentences, stories, and experiences, and published our very own magazine called Chaos GL as a photocopy at the beginning. Just as society did not trust in gays, gays did not trust in one another neither. To end this bad luck, We worked very hard and published Turkey's first gay magazine regularly every month. Açıldıkça kendimizi ifade edip varoluşlarımızı ortaya koydukça Türkiye toplumunu da dönüştürdük. Enformel ev toplantılarıyla başlayıp Türkiye'nin ilk kayıtlı LGBT derneğine ulaştığımız tüm bu örgütlenme sürecimizde farklı ayrımcılıklar arasında bağlantılar kurmaya çalıştık. As we came out and expressed ourselves, our gay beings transformed the Turkish society. During the formation of our organization, which started as informal home meetings and became Turkey's first registered LGBT association, we tried to make connections between all different types of discrimination. Homofobi ve transfobi meselesiyle seksizm, milliyetçilik, ırkçılık ve militarizm arasındaki bağlantılara dikkat çekmeye gayret ettik ve nihayet homofobi ve nefrete karşı mücadele pratiklerimiz Türkiye sınırlarını aşarak Balkanlar, Kafkasya ve Orta Doğu'daki LGBT'lere kadar ulaştı. Ne mutlu ve gurur verici ki birlikte özgürleşme idealimiz başkalarının diline de tercüman oldu. We worked hard to highlight the connections between homophobia, transphobia, sexism, nationalism, racism, militarism, and finally our struggle against homophobia and hatred went beyond the borders of Turkey and reached to the LGBT people in the Balkans, Caucasia, and the Middle East. It was a great pleasure and honor to see that our efforts to strengthen one another and become liberated together was also the wish of others. Elbette farkındayız. Homofobik nefret bizleri yeniden görünmezliğe mahkum ederek seslerimizi boğmak ve hayatlarımızı küresel ölçekte ablukaya almak istiyor. Dini ve siyaseti tek eline alarak homofobik nefretini şiddete kadar vardıran bu inkar politikalarına karşı bizler de yerel, bölgesel ve nihayet küresel dayanışma ağlarımızı kurmalı ve homofobi ve nefrete karşı mücadelemizde birbirimize güç vermeliyiz. Ancak böyle yaparsak ve kararlı olursak David'i aramızdan alan nefret sarmalının bütün bir hayatı zehirlemesine karşı durabiliriz. But of course we are aware homophobic hate chokes our voices and blockades our lives on a global scale by imprisoning us in invisibility to go against the policies of denial which carry homophobic hate all the way into violence by monopolizing religion and politics we must establish local regional and global networks of solidarity and empower each other in the fight against homophobia and hate only such an insistent work will stop the spiral of hatred which took david away from us 20 yıl önce ankara'da ilk adımlarımızı atmaya başladığımızda iki şeyden emindik 
eşcinsellerin kurtuluşu heteroseksüelleri de özgürleştirecek. Ve şüphesiz ki mücadele yoksa özgürlük de yok. Bu süreçte aldığım David Cato Vision and Voice ödülünün gökkuşağının altında birlikte özgürleşmek için yürüttüğümüz mücadele ve politikalarımızı geliştirmede beni güçlendireceğinden ve daha da cesaretlendireceğinden şüpheniz olmasın. 20 years ago when we made our very first steps in Ankara we were sure of two things. Liberation of homosexuals will also free heterosexuals. And undoubtedly, if no struggle, then no freedom. The David Cato Vision and Voice Award that I'm proudly receiving will make me stronger and give me more courage in improving our struggle and continuing our advocacy towards the liberation of us all. Bu ödülü dünyanın her yanında sessiz kalmış, nefrete ve cezaya maruz bırakılmış milyonlarca LGBTI bireyi adıyorum. I dedicate this award to the millions of silent lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex voices around the world who are confronting hatred and persecution. Herkese teşekkür ediyorum. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, you were fantastic, and what a moving, moving award. Congratulations to, to you, my friend. Well done, well done. Thank you. Maurice, thank you very, very much.